Very good. Uh, man, uh, let's go ahead and dive in. First of all, man, I am so happy to be back. Happy to be uh, Man, so, uh, uh, man, thank you so much for the encouragement cards that you all sent to me. And, like, I, I was reading them while I was on the couch. I'm not going to lie, I may have cried a little bit. That's how much I miss you guys. Um, so just to kind of give you an update uh, on me, so uh, with this um, with this injury that I do uh, that I have, I, I'm still injured. Unfortunately, I didn't really get too much better, but uh, I got had a lot of doctor's appointments, and uh, I I will be having surgery soon. All right, to fix whatever uh, what's wrong with me and my back. So if you could please pray for me, still like I'm around, but uh, not gonna lie to you, I'm 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 still hurting. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, being at home. And not here is a whole lot more painful uh, than, than me being here tonight. So I just want to tell you that I love you guys, and I'm happy to be back. Also, uh, the advance is coming up. Our high school retreat coming up. It's going to be fantastic. So real quick, though, uh, we did a little social media push. Uh, for those of you who brought your Bible, could you just raise up your Bibles, all right? Anyone who brought your Bibles, all right? Good stuff, all right. Good, good, good. Now, for those of you who do not have a Bible, we will be giving away nice Bibles tonight, okay? And not the hardcover ones that you get in like a hotel, you know, in their little drawer area. You know what I'm talking about? Like the hard shell? No, we have some nice ones. Uh, look over there with Kylie. She has some, some awesome, nice, leather-bound um, Bibles. So if you... If you need a Bible, you don't have a Bible that is your own, we want to make sure that you have your own nice Bible. Oh, and hello, Port Jervis. Hi. Get up for Port Jervis, everybody. Hey. What we really need to do is, like, we need to put, like, a baseball hat on the iPad and, like, dress them up in a T-shirt or something, so that way it's, like, I'm preaching to, like, a person versus an iPad. I don't know. Anyways, uh, so during the month of January, please be bringing your Bibles so, real quick, to talk about what we are doing here in the month of January. Well, how many of y'all know that January is a good time to kind of reset some things, right? Some of you guys have some New Year's resolutions and stuff. Why do you do that? Hey, January is a good time to reset. And so, what I'm calling for this ministry to do, so I'm doing this, my family is doing this, our leaders are doing this, and we want to encourage you to do this too. Uh, we're going to go into a time of uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting. And we're going to be fasting um, as, as, as a church. So before you get hungry, uh, let, me, let me kind of explain what, what, what fasting is first. But why, why are we doing this? This 21 days of prayer and fasting. Well, one, I want everyone to go deeper in their prayer life. Someone say deeper. 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 So what I want to encourage you guys to do, and if you have your phones, you're allowed to bring them out in church, okay? If you have your phone, uh, do this with me. Just put a little alarm for 9 p.m. Yes, it's 9 at 9. So set an alarm for 9, 9 p.m., okay? Technically, we're starting on Wednesday, so if you want to wait a few days. But the idea is this, starting on Wednesday... Anytime that alarm goes off at 9 o'clock, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, I want you to stop and give God your undivided attention for nine minutes, wherever you're at. Just pray, pray, pray for this church, pray for yourself, pray for your family, just pray, uh, pray, set a reminder on your phone. What else? Uh, we want everyone to go deeper in their devotional life. Now, how many of you guys have the Bible app on your phone, the YouVersion Bible app? Okay. Well, guess what? Collective Youth is officially on the YouVersion Holy Bible app right now. Yeah, you can be excited about that. Right now, if you want to see the notes, for tonight's sermon, you can go and open the YouVersion Holy Bible app, and on the small little bottom bar, you click on more, and then once you click on that, you hit events, and then bam, Collective Youth is on that, and you will be able to see <clears throat> the sermon 
uh, for, for tonight, all the notes, all the scriptures I use, right? Because I want you to get deeper. Y'all, understand, understand this. I am a pastor, but I'm also a man, all right? An imperfect man, because there's only one perfect person, <laughs> you know who, all right? So, so here's what I want you to do. I, I never want you to take anything I say here up on stage on, on face value. I want you to make sure that whenever, whatever church you're at, whatever church you visit, you want to make sure that what the pastor is talking about lines up with the word of God, okay? So make sure that way it's, it's all up there. Also, we're gonna have some uh, devotionals uh, on that YouVersion app. So on Wednesday, if you live in Pennsylvania, New York, or New Jersey, if you go back on the YouVersion app, uh, you will see Collective Youth 21 Days of Fasting, day one where we have an amazing devotional. Why? Because we want you to go deeper uh, in, in the word, okay? And like I said, bring your Bible. Bring your Bible, amen? Amen. amen. Also, too, we want to go deeper in our relationship with God. Is the baby crying? Yes! That is awesome. For those of you who are confused, that is not her real baby. That is just a, a project for school, all right? Everyone, everyone is like, oh, yeah, so yeah, so keep that in mind. So we want everyone to go deeper in their relationship with God, and so we want to encourage you, uh, again, 21 days starting on Wednesday, to start fasting, and you don't have to fast food. There's different things that you can fast. Um, at the end of the night, our small group leaders are going to give you a guide uh, what to fast, and... Uh, so it might require, hey, every Sunday you will fast television. All the football people go like, ah, all right, so. Uh, or every, uh, every Monday you decide to just stay off of social media for one day, all right? So that's kind of what we're doing. Why, why do we fast? It's because of this. We sacrifice something in the physical realm to obtain something in the spiritual realm, all right? We sacrifice something to gain something in the spiritual realm, Amen. So, uh, so yeah, what's the point in all of this is for us to grow closer to God and closer with each other. So that way you know that when you go to school, you're not the only Christian guy, Christian girl in your school doing this. We're going to do this together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, have your way in this room tonight. Thank you that I am able to be here. God, sustain me. So the end of this message, God, I pray that everyone here would just uh, feel loved by, by you and by the church. God, I pray that anyone who has come here who are hurting, God, I pray that they would feel comfort. God, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to comfort them, Father, wrap your hands around them, Jesus, and help us as a church to help those who are hurting. We love you. Everyone said amen. 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 Let's jump on in here. So to start off the sermon, okay, talking about the Bible, we're going to go into a friendly competition where you are allowed to cheat. You are allowed to have your phones out during this. And I'm going to ask you a question, okay? The first person to raise their hand and give me the correct answer to my question, Kylie will give a prize to them, all right? Ooh. In the form of an IOU, because I forgot to bring the prizes tonight. Sorry. Hey, we all fall short. It's in the Bible somewhere. All right, here we go. So, if you're with me, let me hear you say, yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Okay, question number one. Un, how fast can the fastest animal travel? No, wait, wait. You have to raise your hand. Yes. Wrong. Yes. 186,000 miles per second. What? what? No, Sophia. No. Okay, okay, yes. To cl close. I need the precise. Yes, sir. 240? 240. By which animal? Yes, you get the answer right, ladies and gentlemen. And you get an IOU, so I will, I will get you a candy bar 
next week because I forgot. Sorry. All right, does everyone understand now? Question number two. You have to raise your hand out calling you. You have to get the right answer, okay? Who is the richest person in the world? Uh, uh, yes? No, almost. Okay, I am going to give it to you. It is Jeff Bezos, Catherine. But let us all agree that she cheated. I said it she. What? What? Who? Bernard Arnold. Bernard Arnold? Yes. Google never lies. Google never lies. Ryan, you got an IOU. You got an IOU. He said, yeah. Okay, okay. Sam will get you. Again, IOU, okay? Like, so. Next Sunday morning, there's going to be, like, a bunch of, like, a bunch of teenagers, like, trying to get my money at church. It's going to be horrible. All right. A harder one. According to records, how many people have lived to be over 125 years old? Uh, no. No. I want somebody who's actually, like, searching this. Yes? No, you don't know. What? You all got the answer. <sighs> yes, give me the answer over here. No. Yes? No? All right. According, according to Bible records. What do you mean? Oh, we're just like, oh, that's a cow. No, it is, oh, oh, no, you give them out. They're all, oh, Hershey Kisses. Okay, um, <laughs> anyways, shh. according to records, 34 people in the Bible are recorded to have lived more than 125 years. 125, all right? All right, now, shh. Last question. You guys can put your phones away for this one. Because this one, you're not going to raise your hands. You're going to think about this question and answer it in your own mind, not out loud. It's this. What is your source for answering the questions of life? The reason, shh, the reason why I say this, y'all, is maybe you're a lot like me and you've gotten used to just Googling the answer to things. Or maybe you've gotten used to asking Siri. Siri. You know, like maybe you've like gotten used to answering her, but have you noticed that like none of us question Google? Even right here, they're just like, Google says this, and yet we don't question that. Let, let me ask you, know, you're good, you're good. Let me ask you this: like, who is the source of the information that you find online? Do you check us out? Do you know anything about the person or people who have recorded this information? Do you know anything about the people if they have credible knowledge? Do you know if, if that source is even reliable or if they have some sort of bias, like a political bias? Do you know? You see, many times we don't even know or take the time to find out the source of the information that we get. And the reality is this, the truth is only as good as your source. Someone say source. source. The truth is only as good as your source. And so this begs the question, what is the most reliable source? What is the most reliable thing that we have? Yes, Eddie. The Bible. Give it up for Eddie, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yes. The Bible is unique, y'all. It's unique in that it stands out as the most reliable source of information. Why? Because this is God's word. And how do y'all know that this world changes its mind every other hour? Culture is changing. The world is changing, and not for the better. But guess what? The word of God never changes. So why? Why do we even listen to this book? Why, 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 why do we do this? Well, 
Let's jump into our text here. 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. Some of you guys brought NIV or ESV, uh, great versions, but I'm going to be reading out the NLT. It says this. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. This is Paul talking to Timothy. And you will recognize this verse because I use this verse a lot when I preach. Uh, can I give you a spoiler? Like, if I repeat something, it means it's important. Nod your head if you understand. Nod your head. Okay, good. You know, uh, so you must be faithful to the things you have been taught in regards to Scripture. You know they are true, but you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood. And they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. Someone say amen to that. Amen. Verse 16. All scripture. This is where it gets big, y'all. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Someone say amen. amen. All right, facts. There you go. I like that. That's good. That's like a modern day amen. I like that. All right, so if you're taking notes or if you're following a, a, along in your notes, when it comes to Scripture, you must understand this. All Scripture is divine. Someone say divine. 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 All Scripture is divine. Now, here's this. But we don't have a shot, shot clock anywhere now? No? Okay. Anyways, I'll have it. Sorry, no. Uh, thank you. Yes. I have one here on my phone. We'll just use that. All Scripture is divine. What do I mean by that? Um... Contrary to what people say, the Bible is not written by a bunch of old white guys. And I'm confident when I say that because geography, all right? It was not there, all right? Can we all agree with that? Okay. Now, the Bible was not put together by men to uphold the male patriarchy, all right? How do I know that? Let's get real. The truth sets you what? The truth sets you? Free. Right. And we believe the capital T truth, okay? And scripture doesn't oppress people. Scripture liberates people, whether they are male or female. All right? All the ladies say yeah. All right? So yeah. that was weird. Yeah? I don't know. I just... <laughs> The reason why I say that is like you might be thinking like, oh, Pastor Chris, no one actually believes those things, right? Well, I don't know, man. I've, I've seen enough stuff online, enough comments from people stating things like this. A lot of people had the Bible all wrong. So understand this. The Bible is not meant to oppress us. No. And the Bible is written not by a bunch of old white guys. Going back to Timothy 3.16. Like it says this, all scripture is inspired by, is inspired by God. So we're saying this, the Bible is inspired. What, what do we mean by that? What do we mean by that? We mean this, uh, the definition of inspiration, God's oversight and management of the human authors of the Bible so that using their own personalities, they composed and recorded without error his revelation to man. God's revelation to man. Lots of scripture here tonight. 2 Peter 1, 19-21 says this. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. The message, the holy scriptures. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. For their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and Christ the morning star shines in your hearts. 
Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human, in, uh, human initiative. Wow. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit, and they spoke to God. So what is Scripture saying here? It's saying this, that God used people and inspired them through the Holy Spirit to write the Bible. God used around 40 different people to write scriptures. And a lot of people have a problem with this, right? Because they might say, well, wait a second. Um, 40 people wrote the Bible? How, how can we say it's God's word if multiple people wrote it? How can it be reliable if so many people were adding to it? Um, when you guys write school reports, do you, are you allowed to use Wikipedia? No. no. Why is it? It's because you have a lot of people adding, adding to this, like random people who are, who are writing this Wikipedia uh, uh, entries. So people might wonder, well, wait a second, isn't the Bible just an ancient form of Wikipedia? Like all these people adding? Well, let me teach you how to explain this. And uh, to do this, uh, I would like to invite the amazing Kylie on our stage. Give it up for Kylie, everybody. We all love her. My amazing associate, my, my administrator, my, what's her job title again? I don't, I don't remember. Anyways, you have like three or four of them. Could you do me a song? Could you get the acoustic and uh, do me a favor here? She's very talented, this Kylie person, okay? She knows how to play many instruments. Uh, let's see, Ellie, could you unmute the acoustic and the keyboard, all right? Because we're gonna have you play the piano after this. Are you comfortable? Uh, you're so confident. Anyways, uh, Kylie, can you go ahead and play um, uh, G, D, E minor, C, easy. All right, one more time, if we can get it unmuted. Wow, my back is even more broken. All right, great. G, D, E minor, C. Play it again. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? Give it up for Kylie. Right? All right, uh, put down that guitar and go over to the piano. All right. Go over to the piano here, all right? Uh, let's see, hopefully it's unmuted. Let's see, could you, uh, 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 oh boy, this is, uh, uh, I'm terrified, I'm scared right now. Is it working? <gasps> yeah, all right, G, D, E minor. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> There you go. G, D, E minor, C. Anybody hear that? Yeah. You want to hear that? Okay. I mean, that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that was right. Yeah. yeah, that was right. That was right. Don't yell at her. No, right. <laughs> it was right. Anyways, let me ask you this. Did you miss the F sharp? Okay, that's okay. But that's okay. Let me ask you this. So she tried to say, she tried to play the same notes, but okay. Uh, did these two instruments sound the same? No, why? They're different. They're different. Very good. That's like, see, this is not hard. This is not trick questions, okay? Uh, it's not. Why? Because the sound varies. An acoustic guitar sounds different than a piano, but check this out. Shh, check this out. Did you see that? It was two instruments, but they were being played by the same person. Sounded different. And yet it was the same person. So in the same way, y'all, God breathed his word through different instruments, in this case, people. Um, and they each sounded different. They each had different unique qualities. But the message they delivered was the same. 
G, D, E minor, C, okay? We'll pretend that she didn't forget the F sharp, okay? All right? So that's the exact same way the Bible is, right? Different instruments, different people, but the same source, amen? Amen. And did you guys notice, too, that the reason why we have a piano, the reason why we have an acoustic is because they complement each other? In the same way, each book in the Bible complements the other books of the Bible. Did you know that the Old Testament is basically a, a foreshadow of the New Testament? In the book of Exodus, it's recorded. You guys remember the story of the ten plagues of Egypt? That there was the angel of death who came, right? And so what the Israelites had to do was they had to sacrifice a pure, spotless lamb. lamb. Yeah. And then they had to put three points of contact out of the blood, three points of contact on their wooden doors. And so when the angel of death came, it passed over the household. So that means the firstborn child was safe from death. In the same way, going to the New Testament, in the same way Jesus came, he lived a perfect life. Jesus was a pure, spotless lamb. And it was through his blood on the wooden cross that enabled death to pass over us for all of eternity. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Everything is so cool. Each one, yeah, you can clap for that if you want to. That's good. So it's very, very important, all right? So the Bible is inspired, but also the Bible is accurate. Can somebody say accurate? Accurate. Because you'll hear people going like, oh, the Bible is full of errors. And inaccuracies, Has it, have you had anybody ever tell you that, that the Bible was filled with errors? Okay, a couple people, okay, yeah, over here, over here, yeah. Okay, but people will argue that oh, it's written by people. You can't trust the people. But who was, the people are the instruments. Who's the source of scripture? God. So, is that one mine? That one's mine screaming, all right. But well, remember this, men are not the source, God is. So like, how, how do you know whether or not to believe somebody, right? Well, through relationship, you want to know that person, okay? Maybe somebody tells you a fact. Do they have to prove the fact or do you listen to them because they are a good person, right? It's the same way, it's the same that we can do for God. Let's, let's consider the source of God. Psalm 92, 15, I'm going to blaze through this quickly. They will, be, they will declare, the Lord is just. He is my rock. There is no evil in him. Someone say amen. amen. Psalm 103, 6, the Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. Someone say amen. Amen. Psalm 34, 8, taste, mm, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Psalm 147, 5, how great is our Lord. His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. Y'all, God cannot be wrong. Otherwise, he ceases to be God. God never makes any mistakes. God is good. God is always accurate. So if that's the case, and, and the Bible truly is the word of God, then that means that his word is also good, is also perfect. Um, this is not in the notes, but... Can I make one observation here with scripture? Can I delineate a little bit? Okay. Um, God doesn't make mistakes. So guess what? You are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. And uh, not in my notes, but maybe there's somebody in this room who needed to hear that, that they're not a mistake. But anyways, let me go on. So God's word is accurate, and it is... Uh, inerrant. So, what's inerrancy? Because you hear that word, it's kind of a churchy word. Inerrancy is this, um, the teaching that since the scriptures are given by God, they are free from error. Um, if we had more time, we could, we could go through archeo archeological studies um, 
We can go through ancient manuscripts. Uh, ancient manuscripts. Um, we can go through all these things to prove that the Bible is is real. We can do that, yes, but most importantly, we can just look at God Himself. Would God lie to us? No. So, are there lies in the Bible? Yes or no? No. No. You know, uh, people are funny because uh, people will say that there's a big, a big error in the in the Gospels in the Bible, and that there is a mess up in the New Testament. Uh, how many guys remember when Jesus was on the cross? And they had a sign over Jesus's head. Do you guys remember what that sign said? Okay. Yes. King of the Jews. Okay. Well. Okay. So. This is where people like like to like poke and prod at the Bible. Okay, it's this. So, in the book of Matthew, it says that the sign said, "This is Jesus, the King of the Jews." But in the book of Mark, it says that the sign said, "The King of the Jews." Okay. Uh, Luke Luke says that this is the King of the Jews. So, adding more words to it. Okay. Uh, let's see, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then the Gospel of John, they, they recorded that, that it said, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Oh, inaccuracy. We found it. Um, have y'all ever heard of the comedian uh, Nate Burgatz, Burgatz, whatever? He has this funny bit where his name is, uh, his name is Nathan. But according to Delta Airlines, his name is Nathaniel. And on his ID, it says Nathan, but Delta says his name is Nathaniel. And he would go to the airport. This is cute. Maybe your small group leader can find this bit because it's hilarious. Okay. But he goes to the check in his bag or whatever, and he makes a joke that, that the person with uh, this luggage is just like, we have a problem. And he's just like, what is this? like, the names don't match. This says Nathaniel. Your license says Nathan. We have a big problem. And then he's just like, but they match, right? It's like they, they kind of match, right? Because Nathaniel, Nathan, they kind of match. I always think of that bit when I hear this. Can we all agree that the king of the Jews, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews, Jesus, the Nazarene, the king of the Jews, kind of all say the same thing? Can we like kind of establish that in the same way that Nathaniel is the same as Nathan? Can we all get past that? Okay, sweet, good. Because yes, they match. And then, oh, this is a good one. Uh, true or false, uh, the only animals of the Bible, sorry, the only animals on the ark came two by two. Uh, raise your hand if you think that's true. Raise your hand if you think that's false. It is false. Do you know why? Because what do animals eat? Food. Food, yes. So... Yes, so in one part of Genesis, it says that there were two by two, but another says there were seven of a clean animal. It's because there was no refrigeration and they needed to eat food. Amen. Does everyone understand that? Yes. You just got it. Thank you. Give it for Easter, everybody. This is amazing. Yes, you got it. I thought it was like celery. (laughs) Celery? No. No. Anyways. So the Bible is accurate. So the Bible is accurate, so that also means the Bible is trustworthy. How many of you guys have ever been lied to? Raise your hand if you've been lied to. Isn't that the worst feeling ever? Like, when you get lied to, all of a sudden, like, you start to think that you can't trust that person. All of a sudden, you think that, like, oh, you start to second guess everything, right? Um... What if I told you that there was somebody who would never lie to you? What if I told you that there was somebody that, that will never lose your trust, who will never lie to you, someone who is 100% trustworthy? Well, who, who is this person? Well, the person is God. He's perfect, and God is holy. He will never lie to you. Um, he will never try to deceive you. This is one of the reasons why God is so awesome. And when people ask you, why do you love Jesus so much? Why do you love God so much? Why are you a Christian? Why do you not? Why? You tell them this. It's because God is the only entity that has not failed you and who will not fail you. 
Amen? Facts. Facts. No cap. No cap. No cap. Cap. No cap. Cap. No cap. Cap. No cap. No cap. Got it. Wow. All right. Second point. When it comes to the Bible, we must understand that all scripture has a purpose. I'm going to say purpose. Purpose. I got to go quick. Let's skip down to 2 Timothy. Let's go to verse 16. uh, 3.16. All scripture is inspired by God. It is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong. Raise your hand if you've been wrong before. All of us should be raising our hand because we all fall short. It's in the Bible somewhere. All right. It corrects us when you are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. All scripture has a purpose. One of the purposes is to complete us. Someone say complete. Complete. 2 Corinthians 3.18. Good tattoo idea. So all of us who have had that veil veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. So the completing work that the Bible is talking about here is God using his word to make us more like him, to make us more like him. So the Bible completes us by trying to make us more like him, and also the Bible equips us. Someone say equip. Equip. Um, So a lot of you guys are athletes, I know. Um, uh, Marvin, if you can come. I gotta crash land this thing. I haven't said that in a very long time. Um, so many of you guys are athletes. A lot of you guys are track stars as well. Like some of y'all like to run on purpose. I don't understand that. Um, but check this out. Um, if you are serious about track, you want to make sure that you have the best shoes to compete, right? You don't want, you know, any, just some regular shoe. And you don't go to Payless for your running shoe. No, where do you go to? Well, you go to the Nike outlets, right? Or, uh, yeah, you go there, or you go to Frank's in Middletown. Anyone you know Frank in Middletown? So, yeah, 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 yeah Frank, yeah, what's well, Frank? You go there, you don't go to Payless shoes, not ragging on Payless, I like Payless, but you don't go to them for their best running shoe. Nike outlet, Franks. For those of you who play lacrosse, you don't go to the Wally Mart, okay, to get the best lacrosse equipment, okay? Where do you go to? You go to Universal Lacrosse, okay? Or Lacrosse Unlimited, okay? You go to those places, right? Lacrosse, all right? Why? Because to get the best equipment, you have to go to the best place that has the best equipment. So, where do you go to to find the best equipment to be a good person, to be a godly person? Where do you go to? The Bible, the Bible yes, the Word. That's right. Let's get over here. Let's go. You don't need to go any further than God's word to be equipped and to be godly in this godless world. Uh, Second Peter, wrapping up. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. The word of God equips us for the work that God has for us here. I'm going to stand up. Don't laugh at me. I might wobble around everywhere. Don't laugh at me. Stop laughing. All right. <laughs> this section over here, I love you guys. Hi, guys. Hi. You guys are amazing. Seriously. Hey, can I tell you something for reals? For reals. No cap. No cap. Is that right? No, yeah. God has a purpose for you. 
You were not created by accident. God has a plan for you. God wants to do awesome things through you guys. Did you guys, did you guys know that? God wants to use you. I love you this section. Yay. All right. Okay. Hi, this section. Hi. Hey. What's up? Word up. All right. <laughs> Get it? Word. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. Uh, this section here, did you guys know that God has a mighty plan for you? That God wants to do a marvelous work through you? That God has a plan that you're not created by accident, but you are created with a purpose? You're not a mistake. God loves you, and he wants to do mighty things through you. I love you this section. Her, yay, yay. Okay, okay, cool. Hobble, hobble, hobble. Hi, this section. Hi. What's up? What's up? I'll get to you, Port Travis. Give me a second. All right. I love you, Port Travis. Uh, this section here, God has a purpose for you. You were created by accident. God has a plan, freaky, that only you can follow through on. God created you for a reason. Yeah, you are different, and that's a good thing. God's going to use you in a mighty way. Amen? I love you this section. Yeah. Hi, this section. Hi, what's up? You guys are so cool. This section over here, God has a mighty plan for you. God has a mighty plan for you. Because God loves you. You are not a mistake. You are not worthless. You are worth his son. You are not created by accident. God has a plan for you that you can walk in. And I know that. I love you this section. You guys are so cool. This is so good. Same for you, poor Jervis. God has a mighty plan for you. He does. And guess what? Um, not only does God has a purpose for you, he doesn't give a flying rip how old you are. Okay? Just because you're a middle school student, just because you're a high school student, that doesn't matter. God loves using teenagers. I mean, think of the story of Joseph. Think of the story of David. Think of the disciples. You know, this world, like, disses teenagers. They put you on some low scale, whatever. Guess what? That's, that's, not, that's not what the church does. We love you guys. And you are not the next generation of churchgoers. No! I hate that. You are the church of now. And God wants to use you in a mighty way now. Amen? Amen. Why do I say that to you? It's because so many people, so many young people, middle school, high school students, they struggle with their purpose. They struggle with their identity in this world. They look to culture to tell them who they are, who they're attracted to, what they should do, how much money they should make. When it all actuality is this, your purpose, your value, your meaning is not found in culture. Where is it found? And the word, there you go. The, God's word, God's word. Um, true wisdom is from God, y'all. And to, in order to know that true wisdom, you have to know this Bible. Uh, when I was in school, do they still do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag at all? Some, okay, 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 that's interesting. Did you guys know uh, there's a Pledge of Allegiance to the Bible? Yeah, yeah, some of the, okay, if you go to Christian school, you know that. There's also a bunch of allegiance to the Christian flag. Kind of lame, to be honest. Um, but uh, the, uh, the Bible one is kind of cool. It says this. We're not going to say it together, but I want you to hear these words. Listen to these words. Worship team, we can make your way up here. Um, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Now, before your parents email me and 
tell me how dare I mention the Pledge of Allegiance because of the Bible, because it is kind of controversial, causes controversy. I don't know why. Um, understand this. Our allegiance is to God, okay? The Bible didn't die for our sins. Jesus did, amen? But still, y'all, if this is the word of God, this has to be the center to our faith. So with every single head bowed, every single eye closed, as we go into these 21 days of prayer and fasting, I want you to think about these words. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet. I will make it a light into my path. And I will hide its words in my heart. I can I ask you this? If you're willing to commit yourself to the word of God, if you're willing to commit to this 21 days of prayer and fasting, this nine at nine, with every single head bowed, every single eye closed, no eye peeking, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand, okay? So on the count of three, raise your hand. If you're willing to commit yourself to the word of God and everything that it holds, Can put your hands down and stand.